Hello and welcome, my name is Alex Centeno and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at how to properly grade log footage. I know that a lot of people have a little bit of difficulty with log footage, especially shooting it because it's a little bit different to, to shoot it. Uh, but once they shoot it, then they have a little bit of difficulty grading it properly. So we're going to take a look at how to properly grade log, log footage. Let's take a look. All right, so I'm here in DaVinci Resolve. All I'm going to do is move some footage from my media library into my timeline. And we're going to take care of some project settings. In color management, we're going to make sure to have color managed. We're going to use the management preset of DaVinci's wide gamut. And then we're going as an output color space to P3 DCI, but of course, if you're going to the web, you could use sRGB. If you're going to, for example, an HDTV, you could go to Rec. 709. And if you're going to HDR, then of course, you would change to uh, ST2084 um, or uh, something else. But in this case, we're not going to be messing with HDR. In this case, we're just going to P3 DCI. And so important is that we're color managing. That's the important aspect here. Uh, I'm going to move my footage into the timeline and another important distinction here is that I'm going to select my footage, right click and where it says input color space, I'm going to make sure that I'm, that I'm in bypass, okay, in bypass. By default, sometimes some log footage is going to be detected as Rec. 709, mistakenly. So we want to make sure to be in bypass. Excellent. We go to the color tab and from here we start. I'm going to add some nodes, five nodes, and I'm going to name the first one exposure. The second one I'm going to name contrast. The third one I'm going to name saturation. The fourth one, the actual look. And then the fifth one, the color transform. Okay. Um, because I don't want to be doing this over and over again, then I can save it to the gallery uh, by saving a still. And so I'm going to be able to start with this process uh, without having to create this node tree. I'm going to go to open effects. And from here, I'm going to select from resolve FX color. I'm going to change the color space transform here. From here, the input color space is going to be uh, Panasonic V gamut and Panasonic V-Log. Okay, the important thing is the input color space to match it to your camera. We're going to be changing the color space from V-Gamut to uh, P3 DCI. And the input gamma, we're going from V-Log to a linear one. So that's the important thing to consider here. Uh, and this is the biggest problem, really. This is the biggest secret to the problem. Some colorists actually take uh, long footage and all they do is add contrast and saturation. And that's not gonna give you the right result. And the reason for not getting the right result is, is that uh, a change of gamma is not just removing contrast, it's actually changing the properties of the curve. So it's moving it from a linear curve to a logarithmic curve and therefore its name, log gamma. So, uh, or log gamma, sorry. And then we have space, uh, uh, color space, which a color space for the V gamma, for example, is enormous, and we need to go to a more restricted one. So it looks desaturated, but it's not just a problem of adding saturation, it's actually transforming the color space. So this process takes care of that. And as you can see, now our footage looks proper in a Rec. 709 display, and uh, I'm ready to grade. So. Exposure. I'm looking at my scopes as I do this, just making sure that my lift, gamma, and gain are where I want them. And again, this tutorial is not exactly about the proper way of grading itself, like the art of grading, but um, I'm just going to show you how I would do it. So, contrast, I'm going to be adding to this one a little bit of contrast, making it a little bit lighter. Next, we're going to be adding saturation. Next, the actual look. All right. 
that's looking pretty good. Let's go to the second example. So instead of starting from scratch, I'm gonna go to my gallery and just apply the grade. This is gonna give me the no tree. And from here, I'm just gonna start again with my color transform. This one is also for the GH5, so Bigamet and Panasonic Vlog. And let's start. I'm gonna modify the exposure. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Nice our contrast. saturation and our look. Excellent. And uh, we're going to finish by doing an example for the Mavic Pro, which uses um, a different kind of log curve, but still logarithmic. So I'm just going to go gallery one more time, apply this grade, and let's take a look. I'm gonna transform the color space one more time. Input color space, we're going to DJI D gamma. Input gamma, DJI D log. The important thing in this step is to make sure that you're using the proper transform for the footage that you took. Fine. So in this case, I'm going to Kind of decrease a little bit of the of the contrast instead of adding contrast. Now we're going to do the same with the saturation. Just remove the saturation. All right, and then the look is going to be a little bit more stylized. And let's finish doing the same. This time, I'm just gonna grab this still so that I can start with that for my final one. All right. Because this has the same color transform, I don't need to touch that. I can go ahead here and reset this node and start from this spot. I'm gonna reset this. All right. Okay. Contrast. Saturation. And look. Okay, that looks pretty good. As a last step, make sure that you finish with, um, and I'm gonna just reset it so that I show you, you go to color, this is one way of doing it, uh, and then from here, presets, chroma light dark. What that does is that it changes the coloring of the blacks and whites so that they are chroma neutral. Uh, in other words, they don't have any chroma or any color associated to the blacks and to the whites of the images. I'm doing this at the timeline level so that I don't have to do it in each one of them. Excellent. There's another way of doing the color transform and I'm just going to talk briefly about that. So instead of doing the color transform at the end here, instead I could change the, um, the individual clips input color space. So in, if you remember, at the beginning, we changed the input color space to bypass. So we were bypassing the input color space. But you could technically just change this to the appropriate color space. For example, in the one that we were, uh, in the one that we're looking here is going to be DJI D Gamma D Log. So you can change it at this level. And it's not gonna give you exactly the same result as we were in the example, but it's going to properly transform your footage uh, from the gamut that you're using and from the gamma that you're using to the actual destination uh, gamma and gamma. 
So this is another way of doing it. I prefer to do it with a transform, but of course you can do it the best way for you. That's all for today. I hope that you had um, some new knowledge added to your arsenal. And as always, please uh, make sure to comment and to like this video, subscribe for more information, uh, smash the a little bell, which helps uh, move our videos up in the algorithm. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.